Over the past few weeks, our neighboring islands have been severely affected by hurricanes. The government of Jamaica has since established the Irma Relief Fund to assist with monetary donations. Donations can be made at any national commercial bank to account number 212-387-304. Welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Coming up on the pages today, DCP Novlet Grant discusses the impact that the iPad for Life program has been having on our youth. Then later, a look at the benefits of fish in our diet. Stay tuned for more as the magazine unfolds. Are you registered to vote? If not, don't miss your chance to get on the next voters list. The deadline for registration is Friday, September 29. Persons not registered by September 29 for the November voters list cannot be added before May 2018. To get registered, simply visit the EOJ constituency office nearest you. For more information, call us at 922-0425-9 or visit www.ecj.com.jm. Remember, voting is your right. Identity, purpose, attitude. Destiny, the acronym for the iPad for Life program, which has had a life-changing impact on many of our youth. DCP Novlet Grant tells us more on issues and answers. Thanks for joining us for Issues and Answers. I'm Ian Boyne. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is involved in much more than crime fighting, narrowly defined. It is also involved in a lot of the, the, the soft aspects of uh, security, um, building up people's self-esteem, particularly the self-esteem of youth. There's a very exciting program that JCF has, the Youth Empowerment and uh, Mentorship Program, otherwise called the iPad uh, Program. Mm -hmm. The conceptualizer of this program, Deputy Commissioner of Police, Novlet Grant, would tell us what the iPad Program is about and the impact that it has been making all over the island. So we, we put the JCF in focus today and show the, the, the multiplicity of, of roles that it plays. We thank you so much for your company. DCP, good to have you on the program. The Youth Empowerment and Mentorship uh, Program is one of the exciting programs that the, the JCF is um, overseeing. And I know you work closely with the Community Safety and Security Branch. And you conceptualize this program. Uh, why did you see the need for this? And, and what does this program attempt to do? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. The, I've always been doing personal development and um, trying to get people to build their self-confidence and self-esteem. And I'd worked with youth programs before. But in 2015, I went to Westmoreland to be the speaker at a valedictory exercise, mm -hmm. and I had a lengthy conversation with the principal. And out of it, I recognized that, you know, we should get back in school and expand our roles in school, not merely to talk about, narrowly talk about safety. And yes. you can't, I, I believe that a safe school begins with the mind. It safety begins with the mind. Crime prevention mm -hmm. begins in the yes, mind. Yes. So if you want to get people to behave in a particular way, you have to get them to address their mindset. Absolutely. And so I offered, you know, just on the spur of the moment, how would you like to have a, a summer camp? Mm -hmm. And he said, it's a brilliant idea. So having said that, I felt that it was incumbent okay, on me to, to come and organize um, and, and design what the camp should look like. Um, and I consulted with uh, Inspector Jacqueline Dillon, who used to work with me at Era 5 headquarters, because we had done a lot of camps in, 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 in Era 5, and they have, that's their role, basically, mm -hmm. to work with youths. So design the program and needed a, a frame, because uh, like I showed you, we have this frame that we, yes. we use for our empowerment program mm -hmm. and uh, you know a friend of mine had I was inspired by her um, using the same the, the concept of iPod so we we pulled our same we had the themes here oh. so we pulled them together because we iPod. asked 
Th right, but we pulled ours. Oh yes. Because, yeah, to yeah. to be iPad. iPad for life. And tell us because what, because yes. because we we have been asking you the question, who am I? Mm -hmm. What is my purpose? Yes. What's my attitude? And my destiny. Where am I going? So that is it. So when we when so we I use for identity. identity which is to know myself. Yeah, P is, is for purpose, purpose, which is to learn and grow. A attitude, attitude, which which uh, the virtues we extol there, uh, mm -hmm. respect, kindness, and gratitude. And the D is for destiny, destiny, my life path. Where am I going? Mm -hmm. And so we talk to youths about their hopes, their dreams, their fears, their aspirations. Mm -hmm. We talk to them about some of the cultural messages that they hear you know, the kind of labels, the prejudices, the, all of those things that undermine their self-esteem. We talk to them about important relationships. The ones that we emphasize really is um, parent and child, yeah. a lot, critical. a lot, because that is a critical one. There are other important relationships that we talk to them about what we really spend a lot on parent and child relationship and relationship with their peers. Um, because within the frame of the narrative is, is helping them to build core life skills. And there are critical core life skills that we think they need to master. Effective communication, for example. A lot of the conflict that, that, that they have starts with their inability to express themselves. We find that they lack, they lack emotional vocabulary. They can't express emotions very well. And so it is expressed in terms of physicality mm -hmm, true. Um, or abusive words because unfortunately they are exposed to a lot of adverse experiences and verbal abuse is mm -hmm. one of those big areas that they, they seem to have a lot of vocabulary for. Yes, yes. So, so within that, the, the whole, the, we, we emphasize that you are at a stage where you can learn, you can grow. That is your, that's a natural stage you're at. Even though it's, it's, it's the, I would say, the prerogative of all adults, all human beings actually, to continue to learn and grow. But you are at that critical point of your learning and growing. Mm -hmm. And we want you to master certain skills and certain virtues. We, when we look at attitude, you know everybody likes to say you have an attitude. <laughs> But nobody is ever telling you specifically what is the negative attitude that makes relationship fraught with conflict. Mm. And nobody is ever promoting the kind of attitude that you should, as a youngster, try and adopt and, and, and live by. So we told them, you know what, for you it's respect, kindness, and gratitude. Oh, these are the three. The three that three, we emphasize. Um, virtues. Virtues, respect, respect, kindness, kindness, and gratitude. gratitude. We emphasize that a lot. And in doing so, we see, we start to see, almost from day one in the camp, mm -hmm. we start to see them showing. We start to demonstrate yes. it. Yes. yes, especially Once kindness. Taught, see. Yes, mm -hmm. especially kindness. You saw, you know, we see them being kind to each other. We see them re recognizing the need to show appreciation when oh. somebody does anything for oh. them, oh. to say thank you. We see them looking out for each other in a way that based on some of the reasons why they are sent to the camp, mm -hmm. you would not expect that from them. But it tells you it's there. Mm -hmm. it, they just need somebody to empower so them. So it shows that, that, that these youth are trainable. They are trainable. They are trainable. And they are not irredeemable. No, and critically, we don't want them to drop out of school. We, we are trying to get them to recognize now that you have choices yes. and decisions to make, even at this young age, and they come with consequences. And so that is the life path that you're yeah. setting your foot on. Yes. Are you on the right life path? Good. Who are you traveling with? Who are the people influencing you? And we, we put it to them in stark terms that they can understand. So I said to them, you are currently in schoolhouse. From schoolhouse, where are you heading? Mm -hmm. You have two choices for life path. Schoolhouse, arms house, mm -hmm. dead house, early, sorry, jailhouse or early dead house. Yes. That is a life path if you make certain choices. Yes. They come with that kind of consequence. But we want you to stay in schoolhouse, mm -hmm. get to know who you are, become a lot more self-aware, mm -hmm. understand your purpose is to learn and grow, 
understand that if you have the right attitude of kindness, gratitude, and respect, and your destiny in your life path, mm -hmm. you can move from schoolhouse mm -hmm. to king's house. Yeah, Jamaica house. Jamaica house. Yes. Any kind of house <laughs> that is other than the other one, <laughs> so long as you become a uh, a productive member of the society. Yes. We're going to break at this point, yes. uh, DCP uh, Grant. The constabulary force is, is making an, an impact, is reaching the young people, um, trying to bring critical uh, values to them. The Deputy Commissioner of Police, Novelet Grant, is telling us about one such program that the JCF has, the Empowerment and Youth Empowerment and Mentorship Program. She has more when we come back from a short break. That in a recent survey done by the OCA in schools across Jamaica, 43% of the students received inappropriate messages from strangers. The OCA wants you to be smart online. Never speak to persons you don't know. Parents, encourage your children to be social but be smart. This message was brought to you by the Office of the Children's Advocate with support from UNICEF. Welcome back. We're speaking to Deputy Commissioner of Police, Novlet Grant, who conceptualized a, a very important youth empowerment and mentorship program um, called by its acronym the, the IPAD uh, program. Uh, this is a program which involves uh, camps as well as one-to-one -one, uh, mentorship, um, mentorship in, in, in group, and really life coaching. Um, imparting critical skills to young people, skills which will prevent them from encountering the police in, in another context. Uh, DCP, you were talking to us about the, the impact of the program. And you, you perhaps would have some testimonials already. The program began, I think, about 2015. 2015. Right. Uh, some testimonials from, from young people and their parents, who have been, and and their teachers, parents have been parents impacted. And teachers. Um, when we started in 2015, I, I must confess we never expected the, the kind of impact so quickly. We, we, we designed something for a whole year, um, and uh, but immediately the first camp was finished. That was Westmoreland? In Westmoreland. Mm -hmm. We had youth, I, one of the first, I would say, I, I call it a very profound testimonial, was a youngster going to a teacher and saying, sir, you know, I'm going to plan for kill you, but I changed my mind. Is that so? Yes. That, that was life-changing for us. Mm -hmm. Because we then had to try and find out why was this impact so great so quickly. Mm -hmm. And we, we, so we normally keep up with them. And a lot of them told us, we went back during the school year, and a lot of them told us about becoming a lot more self-aware and a lot more conscious of their potential, of their possibilities. They, they change their attitudes towards learning, towards school, towards authority, towards each other. They moved on to doing well at academically, did well at sports. Mm -hmm. they, they, they got school um, leadership position, like being prefects and so on. Mm -hmm. And we were, the, the teachers told us, um, we are still seeing, you know, we, we, we had it in the summer, in July and December. We were getting from teachers that, you know, this, this we have still seen really positive um, impact and results. By the following year, you know, they were talking about tremendous benefit to the schools. And a number of the, the students who came to the camp, they fulfilled their potential at sports. As I said, in academics, we had a young lady who, whose social skills were really low. She had a scholarship and went over to the U.S. We had from Petersville School um, persons come and break in um, record at champs in the field events, going overseas and doing the same thing. 
So it, it, it convinced us that we needed to move out of Westmoreland. Mm -hmm. So this year we went right across the island. Across the island? Yes. We, 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 we had one in St. James, Westmoreland and St. James. Mm -hmm. So we had two over in that region. And then we went and combined St. Mary, St. Anne and Portland and had one. We combined Manchester, Clarendon and St. Elizabeth, had one, you know, for all of those students. And then we had a combination of um, St. Thomas, St. Andrew, St. Catherine and Kingston in Browns Hall. That was the last one. Parents have sent texts or sent message to ask, what have you done to my children? I don't recognize is them. That so? this is yes, they have said, what did you do? The because impact the, the, is, is that tangible. That the, we, the, even within the camp themselves, we could see the changes, the changes. before the two weeks were up. Yes. It wasn't smooth sailing, because the first year when we went, they were very, mm -hmm. we don't have anything to do with police See, and police that. Police but, yeah. but the funny <laughs> thing, by the Monday, they were saying that the Sunday evening, <laughs> and by Monday morning, we had a number of people who wanted to be commissioner of police. <laughs> we had a number of people who wanted to be everything. And by the two weeks were over, they were saying, it's too short. We need it. We brought in the parents for parent day. Mm -hmm. And we had conversations with them. This year, the conversations were a little deeper with the parents because we wanted to, for them to demonstrate the quality of their communication with their kids in terms of giving them empowering messages. And I must confess, for the most part, that is in short supply. Mm -hmm. The empowering messages mm -hmm. from the parents, they are not as strong as we want them to be. So we're, we're willing to work with them, obviously. The, 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 the kids are saying to us, you need a cam for the parents. <laughs> um, parents have even said that. As to how that would work, that's another story. But what we need as we continue to mentor throughout the school year is to have alumni from various schools, um, other members of the community, who believe they have what it takes to be a good mentor, mm -hmm. to join us. Because when we run some of the role plays and the social experiments in the camps, even though most of these youngsters are from economically challenged, challenged background, mm -hmm. they never ask for material things. What they're talking about is that relationship. They want quality relationship. They want adults to show that they care. They want us to listen to them. They want to be able to talk to us. They want to have a voice. They want us to not shut them down. So the relationships are very important. And we find that that is true because when we have the circle of strength type exercises. Uh -huh. Tell us about that. Um, the circle of strength, yes. This is where we they sit together, mm -hmm. usually around a campfire, uh -huh. where we want people, this is where we want them to disclose issues that they think they can get help with. And the disclosures, especially this year, have been very traumatic, not just for the youngsters, but for even the police officers who even the following morning were crying. Some literally, police officers themselves literally, are impacted. Literally crying tough, tears. Tough policemen. Yes. <laughs> Men and women literally yeah. cried to hear and understand what our children are going through. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of adverse ex life experiences and the anger that they have without yes. any real outlet, without realizing or, or accepting that there may be somebody who would listen. Yes. So just by giving them a hug, giving them a smile, an affirmative word, mm -hmm. that has made such a difference to them because their feedback to us is having come where you are in two weeks, we have learned what real family could be like. That's what we've experienced. We've experienced love and family and friendship. Fortunately, they do go back to some of the adverse um, challenges. Yes. And that is why but they we go have back strengthened. They yes, go they go back with a new mindset. With, uh, they go back with a, with a degree of resilience. Yes. And that is why we, the mentorship has to continue throughout okay. the school year. And we uh, want and other programs to continue, uh, DCP, because yes. we have other critical things to 
talk about uh, talk about. So we're going to bring back uh, DCP uh, Novlet Grant to continue this interesting uh, discussion on the youth empowerment and mentorship program. We thank you for your company. Uh, next week, I'll be back. Until then, Ian Moore wishing you a pleasant day. Cancer, stress, high blood pressure. Guard yourself against these potentially deadly conditions by eating healthy. Give your body long life with foods such as low-fat milk, dried and fresh peas and beans, unsalted nuts and seeds, fresh vegetables, fruits and coconut water, and eliminate processed seasonings such as seasoning salt, soy sauces and ketchup. When it comes to meats, remember to remove the skin to reduce the intake of fats and oils. Meats should also be baked, steamed, grilled or roasted. Fish is also a preferred protein option. To eat healthy, fill your body with a variety of foods from all the food groups. And remember, eat at a slow pace and in small bites to help aid digestion. This helps to maintain a healthy, balanced and nutritious diet strengthening your body to ward off illness and prolong life. Have you been maintaining a healthy lifestyle, eating right? A huge part of the Jamaica Move project is ensuring we eat balanced meals. Up next, we zone in on a food rich in protein and minerals, fish. Watch this next feature to learn more. <laughs> We all love our protein, chicken, beef, pork, but how often do we eat fish? Is it only at Easter time or when you're at the beach? Incorporating more fish into your diet can be very beneficial to your health. Compared to red meats and poultry, fish has far less calories and cholesterol. It's the saturated fats and the trans fats that our bodies use to make cholesterol. And fish and seafood have very little saturated fat and trans fat. So in truth and in fact, that makes it a very healthy source of protein. Fish also has iron, which is important for good reasoning and memory, iodine, which can prevent mental problems in children, and selenium, vitamins and carotenoids, which are antioxidants. Who knew that we could get so many nutrients from fish? And that's not all. Incorporating fish into our diet can even reduce the chances of developing certain diseases. Studies have in fact shown that people who have a higher intake of fish compared to other meat sources have less heart disease, they suffer from fewer mood disorders, and they have less cognitive decline with age, so less dementia. This is due to omega-3 fatty acids, a nutrient that is only found in a few other food sources, such as walnuts and flax seeds. But oily fish, such as sardines, tuna, mackerel, salmon and trout, are excellent sources of omega-3s and are readily available at your convenience in supermarkets. So we want to add fish into our diet. In what ways can we do this? So escovitch fish is one of our favorites. Now the onions and the carrots and the vinegar and the pimento, that's all fine but we don't want to do a lot of deep frying. Deep frying adds calories. Nothing like a nice steamed fish, a nice roast fish. And when you roast your fish, you can stuff it with wonderful vegetables like callaloo and so on. So we have to find other ways. Many of us have broilers as a part of our stove and we've never utilized it. We don't know how it's used. And that gives us, I think, the closest taste to fried without adding a lot of oil. So we've got different styles of cooking the fish, but what about flavor? Jamaicans love adding salt, but fish is already salty. Wouldn't that be too much sodium? If we utilize other things like lime and lemon juice and or fresh seasonings or scotch bonnet pepper or onions or scallion, we can make our fish flavorful without adding a lot of extra sodium. That sounds really tasty, but watch out for bones. Make sure to debone fish before giving your children. Even if the fish is bought deboned, check for fine bones with your fingers. If you're not careful, you could end up with a medical emergency. The recommended serving size per week is only eight to nine ounces of fish, or two to three servings per week. With an array of health benefits and a variety of ways to cook it, 
Don't miss out on this lifestyle choice. Make a positive impact on your health by adding more fish to your diet. GLV.JM, launched in August, is the one-stop shop website that allows you to conduct business with government agencies. Take a look. Searching online is what most of us do every day. Information is the world's new currency, and the provision of quality information is what is setting businesses, governments, and even countries apart. And when we search, we're looking for information that is accurate, easy to understand, and relevant. And we expect to get there in three clicks. The Jamaican public sector is delivering numerous services every day to clients locally and abroad. Clients who cannot afford to waste neither time nor money searching through hard-to-find information. Introducing gov.jm the gateway that will become the single online space for accessing information on government services in a way that is simple and seamless. Through the Public Sector Transformation and Modernization Program, PSTM, gov.jm is placing the needs of our clients at the center. By placing vast government information in one place, we are making it easier, faster, and simpler for our clients and potential clients to get the information they need, when they need it, and how they need it. For the potential investor or visitor to Jamaica, the ability to find information easily can make the difference between a decision to invest in Jamaica or somewhere else. To start, we found those everyday services in highest demand, the ones Jamaicans locally and in the diaspora frequently need. We took the services non-residents and investors frequently need, and we've started by creating a gateway to those services online. Gov.jm will allow those seeking to do business with government to find what they need faster. Whether you want to know how to apply for a passport, pay taxes online, register a business, or find out your health benefits under the Health Fund program. Information is grouped so that the user knows where to go right away whether he's a resident, non-resident, or an investor. And this is the kind of information, the kind of service that will gain Jamaica international rankings for e-government. We're still at the early stages. The Gateway currently now indexes some of the services available online and provides clear navigation to them. But gov.jm will never stop evolving. It is the customer feedback about information they need that will guide the evolution of gov.jm. Over time, we'll work to bring more and more services online and create a standard online schema for all government websites. gov.jm, the new gateway to government information and services. The search is over. We're at the end of another Jamaica magazine. Hope you found our program informative. Send your feedback to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. Stay informed on our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for more information. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.